From those forces of good who took one hell of a beating in life and somehow didn't give in to the dark side, to some rather intimidating leaders that were nudged onto their paths after some horrifying experiences. Oh, and with a special nod to the at Buffy X post that inspired this list, I am Gareth, this is What Culture, and here are 10 movie characters who had every right to become the villain. Number 10, Scarlet Witch, the MCU. In the time leading up to 2022's Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness, that film's eventual villain, Wanda Maximoff, was well and truly put through the ringer. Following on from her parents being murdered by Stark Industries' weapons, the Scarlet Witch was ultimately turned into a weapon, eventually watched her brother die in Sokovia, her beloved Vision was murdered a few times, and she eventually lost her two sons during WandaVision. After all that devastating pain, and ultimately being corrupted by the Dark Hold. Is it any wonder she was pushed to the point of complete and utter desperation by the time of Multiverse of Madness? Here was a woman who'd lost everything, and was now understandably willing to go to some rather extreme dreamwalking lengths to reunite herself with her boys Billy and Tommy in another part of the multiverse. Admittedly, her brutal murdering of various sorcerers and Illuminati members are the sort of villainous moves that aren't exactly easy to forgive. But Wanda wasn't a monster. She was a a long-suffering figure who simply wanted to take something back after years of agonizing loss. A person who still didn't end up being reunited with what was left of her family when all was said and done. Number 9. The Grinch – How the Grinch Stole Christmas While Jim Carrey himself seemingly had every right to go full heel after the many hours of makeup he was forced to sit through to bring this green menace to life, the same can be said of the Grinch himself, it has to be said. Before becoming the Christmas-stealing terror seen living on Mount Crumpet in How the Grinch Stole Christmas, the devilish green icon was actually just a youngster trying his best to fit in down in Whoville. Instead of accepting the Grinch for who he was after he was adopted and raised by old ladies though, this little legend was bullied for his hairy look, and felt pressured into changing said appearance. That shave gone wrong soon led to a child Grinch being mercilessly ridiculed by not only his classmates, but his teacher too. How cruel. And if that wasn't enough, this was also the first time the youngster had let his guard down at Christmas time, and properly allowed himself to feel the festive spirit, making his crush Martha May Huvier a lovely angel to bring into class. It's no wonder he snapped that day, and went on to completely despise both Christmas and the civilians below in the years to come. They were absolutely horrible to the poor lad. Now I want to know what is your favourite Jim Carrey movie of all time? Is it The Grinch or something else? You let me know in the comment section down below. Number 8. The Tethered Us Introduced in Jordan Peele's frequently chilling 2019 picture known as Us, the Tethered are a quite creepy collection of doppelgangers. And while they do spend a good portion of the picture terrorizing the likes of the Wilson clan and more, their reasons for doing so aren't as shocking as their initial arrival. They actually make a decent amount of sense. You see, for their entire lives, these clone people had been forced to live underground in the wake of being experimented on by the government. So after all that time in the shadows, they were understandable fed up, and finally decided to rise up and enjoy the world their doppelgangers above had all this time. Now sure, the way they went about taking back that freedom, and putting an end to their days of being tethered to their counterparts above was a bit savage, but killing the surface versions of themselves was honestly the only way they could ever be truly free from a depressing life that these jumpsuit wearing clones didn't choose to live. Number 7, Tai Lung, Kung Fu Panda The consistently terrific Kung Fu Panda franchise possesses quite the collection of antagonists, with Dragon Warrior Poe having to take down everything from cold peacocks to powerful bulls over the years. However, easily the most compelling and understandable villain of the bunch could be found in that very first action-packed adventure. Initially introduced as your average seemingly unstoppable baddie, it's eventually revealed that the fearsome snow leopard known as Tai Lung was actually once Master Shifu's favourite student, and even raised him as a son. Not only that, Shifu regularly let Lung know that he was destined for greatness, and made him believe he would one day become the Dragon Warrior. So, when he was eventually denied the chance to be exactly that by a master Ugwe who sensed darkness in him, a heartbroken and hugely frustrated Lung lashing out at all around him was to be expected, really. He didn't choose to have his head filled with these dreams, and it was Shifu who put him through intense training for years, and moulded him into the ridiculously driven Kung Fu Warrior he became. 
And after trying to take a scroll he'd been conditioned into thinking was rightfully his by Shifu, Lung was ultimately defeated by Ugwe and thrown in jail. Put simply, he had every right to be a little pissed. Number 6. Magneto X-Men Comic book villains do not come much more iconic than this metal manipulator. And one of the major reasons Magneto still remains one of Marvel's most captivating big bads is the fact that his origin story is about as tragic as it gets. As a young boy, Eric Lenscher was forced to experience the horrors of the Holocaust up close, with this mutant ultimately being separated from his Jewish parents when they were taken to Auschwitz concentration camp. Sure enough, that horrendous time spent here, a spell that saw his mother being murdered in front of him by Nazis had quite the effect on the eventual pal slash enemy of Charles Xavier. In the years that followed, Magneto regularly fought to protect mutants as soon as it became clear that some humans were looking to exterminate them. And while his methods were sometimes a bit questionable, like attempting to forcefully turn world leaders into mutants and kill all humans via Cerebro, Magneto's motives are definitely justifiable. He's seen the absolute worst of humanity, and he's just trying to keep his kind from being subjugated or destroyed. Number 5. Paul Atreides, Dune Part 1 and 2 by the end of Denis Villeneuve's Dune Part 2, the director makes it clear that the Duke of House Atreides and Lysen al Paul Mwadib Atreides is anything but a hero. But after going through the trauma and other events this bloke experienced over the course of his young life, he had every right to get a little nuts, really. From the second his father was coldly murdered by the Harkonnens and betrayed by Emperor Shaddam IV, a devastated Paul became justifiably obsessed with the idea of vengeance. It also wasn't his fault that the Bene Gesserit created an artificial prophecy and dropped it onto the world of Arrakis before he was even born, a move that would eventually convince many of the Fremen that both Paul and his mother, Lady Jessica, would lead them to paradise. Paul even fights against this dangerous prophecy throughout part two, whenever he's nudged towards his apparent destiny. Fearful of the bloody holy war his visions tell him will become a reality, should he embraced the title of Messiah. That desire to avenge the death of his beloved father and free the people of Arrakis, though, inevitably leads to him becoming a ruthless leader, and the beginning of a conflict that will take the lives of billions. But in truth, Atreides began part two in particular as a young duke who simply wanted to learn the ways of the Fremen and take down the people who attacked his family, and he was largely forced down this dark Kwisatz Hadrak path by those around him. Number 4. Koba, Dawn of the Planet of the Apes there's no denying that the villainous bonobo by the name of Koba does some pretty barbaric stuff throughout Dawn of the Planet of the Apes. However, if you'd lived the life this poor ape had up to that point, there's a good chance you'd harbour a similar hatred for human beings. Koba was horribly tortured by humans in a lab for much of his life, so it's not difficult to understand why he was in such a rush to destroy them, especially after finding their armoury in the film. Ape leader Caesar preferred the peaceful approach, and was happy to allow some humans to to work on a nearby generator that would restore power to their home though. A way of thinking that ultimately resulted in Koba feeling he had no choice but to take matters into his own hands, to ensure the safety of his people. His subsequent actions, manipulating his fellow apes into kicking off a war with the humans, after fooling them into thinking Caesar had been killed by them, may have led to a ton of ape bloodshed. But Koba was still right not to trust a human race that would always possess those who refused to live in peace with them. Something that was highlighted throughout the series. Number 3. Batman The Dark Knight Trilogy the titular vigilante found in Christopher Nolan's Dark Knight trilogy doesn't half go through a rough old time in those game-changing pictures. In fact, Bruce Wayne is forced to deal with so much suffering and trauma during those movies that it's a wonder he didn't just throw in the towel and decide to launch a batarang through his no-killing rule. Hell, he was only a few seconds away from doing that latter thing during the events of Batman Begins, with only a hitman getting there first, stopping him from killing the person responsible for murdering his parents in front of him when he was a kid. Now, this list isn't condoning murder, of course, but you can at least understand why Bruce was this close to literally pulling the trigger. And while he would eventually go on to dedicate his life to saving Gotham from the criminals trying to control it after this, it again wouldn't have been too surprising to see Wayne lose his head a little in the wake of his beloved Rachel being blown up by the Joker in the Dark Knight. But rather than snapping and killing the Joker when he had the chance, Batman refused to be corrupted and allowed him 
destined to live long enough to be arrested. Then, when given the choice of exposing Dent's own corruption thanks to the Joker's actions, or taking responsibility for his murders to preserve Gotham's White Knight, Wayne opts for the latter, turning himself into the villain his city needed him to be, even though he proved himself to be anything but throughout the film. Number 2. Clyde Shelton, Law-Abiding Citizen in the wake of his family being shockingly murdered during the opening scene, law-abiding citizen sees Clyde Shelton go to some somewhat villainous lengths as he goes on to target the corrupt justice system. Understandably fuming after watching the killer of his wife and daughter get away with a lighter sentence, this former CIA worker makes it his mission to not just take out those who broke into his home that night, but those within the justice system who let this injustice happen. Again, his methods were certainly villainous here, and resulted in in numerous murders during the runtime, with Clyde blowing up the assistance of Nick Rice, the lawyer who agreed to that aforementioned lighter sentence, brutally torturing and murdering Darby, the person responsible for the death of his family, killing a judge and cellmate, and threatening to blow up City Hall. But even with all those merciless moments, it's still tough not to root for a father and husband who was forced into this particular position after being put through such an ordeal and being so thoroughly let down by the law. Number 1. Obi-Wan on Kenobi, Star Wars. In a galaxy far, far away, full of folks who give in to their anger and opted to take a walk on the dark side, there was a Jedi Master who, despite having every right to succumb to all his pain, simply refused to walk away from the light. Over the course of his time on screen in Star Wars, the great Obi-Wan Kenobi may have cut down Sith Lords and creepy generals, but he also lost more than just about any other character in the franchise. The Skywalker saga saw Kenobi's Master Qui-Gon Jinn be fatally stabbed by Darth Maul, his Jedi brother slash Padawan Anakin Skywalker turn his back on the light side, and his Jedi Order be completely destroyed by the Empire. All of that trauma alone would have broken even the strongest of humans. Add into that the death of his beloved Satine Kryze during the Clone Wars animated series, and the feelings of guilt that came with the rise of Darth Vader. And you have the recipe for an inevitable heel turn in any other series. Rather than give up after losing all that he loved though, Kenobi somehow found a way to fight through the pain and helped guide the next generation towards a brighter future, salvaging some hope from the tragedy that often was his life. Oh, we love you, Kenobi.